Hello, so today we'll deal with the symptoms of hypocalcemia. So hypocalcemia is a low level of calcium in the blood. And we are interested now of what the patient complains about. So we can divide them into two main groups. We have those who are acute, which means that it's happening very fast, and those who are chronic. That means it develops over weeks, months, or years. And if we start with the acute, because that is more uh, dangerous, one can say, and that is actually happening more commonly, that is when we have a very drastic reduction of hypocalcemia, and we will now get something related to muscles and nerve symptoms. That means tetany, it's called. It's an irritability of the peripheral nerves. And the doctor can test this, of course, by taking a laboratory value, uh, by, but he can test it by a physical examination, by, for example, tapping in front of the ear. He can tap the facial nerve, and if he taps it and the facial muscles on the same side will contract, then we call it Chvostek sign. This is, a, this is a sign of an irritability of the peripheral nerves due to this low amount of calcium. Because we know that calcium is very important for the muscle contraction. It's important for nerves, for the muscle contraction, and therefore it gets irritated if there's a low amount of calcium. It's another sign we have that is called trosso sign. And this is when we, for example, put a blood pressure cuff here and we pump it up. For, and we leave it there for three mi minutes, then these nerves will also be very irritated. And what will happen is that the wrist will become flexed like this. The thumb will go like this. It will be an ad ad adduction. So it will be a flexion, adduction. This, this uh, interphalangeal joints will be extended. And the metacarpophalangeal joints will be flexed also. So th this will be a sign like this. Okay, And that is also happening because the irritation that happens when we have a low amount of calcium. And we can see this tetany not only on hands, but also around the mouth. Then we call it perioral. Perioral lip twitching or lip spasms or, or paresthesias in, in the upper arms, which means that we are not really feeling the arm as, as we should. And there are also weakness, muscle weakness, muscle spasms in the, in the muscles. And these are all signs of hypocalcemia. The more dangerous uh, signs are those that are related to the respiratory muscles because not only skeletal muscles can be affected also the respiratory and we have for example larynx the laryngeal muscles and then we call then we can get something called a laryngospasm so the muscle spasms and that's very dangerous because you can you can actually die if you get a severe spasm and uh, you don't get any um, air into into your lungs and the same goes with bronchospasm so it's a, a muscle spasm along, a, around the bronchus and these are all very severe so whenever you think of hypocalcemia a low level of calcium always think of the peripheral nerves that are irritated and therefore the muscles are weak and they get spastic and they get they are cr they are cramping so connect these two hypocalcemia with muscle spasms or uh, peripheral irritability. And what we can also see is that the brain activity changes. So we can get seizures. For example, grand mal or petit mal or focal. All, all are, these are all three types of seizures that can be seen. And we will put some EEG electrodes on your brain and then we can measure the activity and we will see high spikes, uh, high voltage spikes and bursts in the EEG. And therefore, we can be sure that this is some kind of uh, problem with the calcium, or it can be also another cause, like another uh, type of cause of the seizures. But if you see these muscle spasms and this EEG, then it's pretty clear that this is also due to uh, hypocalcemia and not due to uh, another cause of seizures because seizures have many many causes good
Uh, what can happen in the heart? Heart, uh, we will put some electrodes and the, the specific thing that we can see is a prolongation of the QT interval. So that will be prolonged and that can lead to arrhythmia. So it's also very dangerous and, and very important to um, recognize. Also papil edema, so edema around the eyes can be seen. And these are usually there when it's very severe. And actually tetany is also uh, happening when it's very severe type of hypocalcemia. This means that the free ionized calcium is less than 1.1 millimole per liter and the total calcium is around less than 1.8 millimole per liter. Okay, uh, because there's a difference here between free ionized and total. Total is the total calcium in the blood. That means that it's including those that are bound to albumin. Free ones are not bound to anything, these are free. And the laboratories that are more advanced, those can measure the free ionized one. And in, in this case, when it's less than 1.1, then it's a high risk of getting this um, type of tetanus that we see. Good, so that's it. I want to conclude now to to just say that when you get hypocalcemia patient you always need to think of any kind of twitching muscle twitching around the mouth or paresthesias the a very interesting <clears throat> tingling sensation in the arms, spasms of the muscles, or this carpopedal spasm. That's th this is what we saw in uh, uh, Chvostek sign, or no, in the Trousseau sign, when we uh, pump this uh, uh, blood pressure cuff and we see this flexion of the wrist and we see an adduction of the thumb and extension of the uh, interphalangeal joint and the flexion of this metacarpophalangeal joints. That is typical Trousseau sign. And we can see that with Without the cuff also because it is very severe then it can happen without that and it will stay there for a couple of seconds or even minutes if it's so severe <clears throat> and the chvostek sign was when we are tapping this nerve on either side and we see that when we're tapping we are irritating this nerve because it's already irritated due to this low amount of calcium and then we irritate it even more and it will contract the, these whole muscles of the facial, facial, that same side will contract. Mm -hmm. And that is the Chvostek sign. So these two signs is uh, uh, very interesting to remember. And the other thing that we saw, uh, said was that it is very dangerous to get respiratory, respiratory problems because you, you can get spasms in the larynx or in the bronchus. And we can also see the QT prolongation in the ECG. And uh, these are all acute types. The chronic one, I, I didn't want to deal so much uh, with the chronic one in this presentation because these are very, very diffuse uh, kind of symptoms. It can be, for example, that we have calcific deposition in the brain, for example, in the basal ganglia. And, and we can get uh, symptoms of uh, Parkinson or symptoms of dementia due to this cal uh, calcium depositions, for example, in the brain. And there's also a lot of um, uh, calcific deposits in, for example, in the skin can happen. Then we call it ectopic uh, calcification, for example, in the, in the dermal, uh, so in the skin. We also can see very dry skin due to this hypocalcemia. And in the eyes, we, we can see cataracts. And these are very general, very, um, uh, very hard to actually recognize so therefore i'm not i'm not really focusing on this because if the patient comes in with these symptoms it's very hard to say that this cataract is because of hypocalcemia so so the more, more typical uh, is tetany so please always think of tetany which is a high frequency repetitive repetitive uh, uh, discharge of these nerves uh, due to only for example one stimulus and then this starts to discharge very repetitively and therefore uh, I want you to always connect uh, hypocalcemia with tetany because if you remember only one thing from this whole presentation and you remember only tetany that will be enough because this will cover uh, most of the symptoms of hypocalcemia so I thank you very much for listening